Hi everyone, it's Lauren Kinghorn again, and today I am answering the question, what is email marketing about? Um, we discussed yesterday copywriting and content marketing, and email marketing is a form of content marketing and, and copywriting, of course. You will be writing copy when you're writing emails. So what I wanna do today is to discuss why it's so important so let's get into what the purpose of email marketing is about. Um, the first thing is email marketing is there so that you can build a relationship with your prospects. Um, imagine that you've got a website and your website is receiving some traffic. You're writing posts, say, two or three times a week, you're putting up a new post. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but when I write posts, when I write posts and check my Google Analytics, um, I find that most of the people who are coming to my site are unique visitors. So you look at your page views and you look at how many unique page views you get, how many unique visitors are coming to your site. And for me, because I haven't had an email list up until recently, they were mostly maybe 90%, maybe even more than 90% unique visitors. And the reason for that is I haven't built a relationship with my prospects. If somebody comes to read a post because that's the particular information they were looking for, they will then go away and go off to another post and on another website. But there's no real reason for them to stay unless, of course, I put in a content upgrade into that post telling them um, that they can learn more from me. Perhaps I've written an ebook or there's something else I can offer them um, and asking them for their email details. The moment they are on my email list, that is when I start to build a relationship. So that is when a prospect actually becomes a real lead in my business. And until I understood that about email marketing, I didn't really understand why I had to build an email list. It's a really, really crucial point. If you're going to become a digital entrepreneur, you need to start building an email list or a membership site or some kind of place where you know that your prospects are gonna come back to you again and again and again. Another one of the things I'm doing, other than an email list, is building a group on LinkedIn. I'll leave details of my group below. Um, that's another way where you actually start to connect with people and continually connect with them. And um, in one of the groups I've created, we also have um, an email, LinkedIn email um, list as well, which is great. So the, the ladies are also chatting to each other on that list. Okay, so it's a great way, just trust me please, that you are only going to really start to build a relationship with your prospects when you start to get an email list going or a membership site or some kind of group on Facebook or on LinkedIn. But just remember that when you're build, building a group on any form of social media, it does not belong to you. Your email list belongs to you. I know groups that have been shut down, so it's not necessarily the safest way to go. I don't know if any LinkedIn groups have been shut down, but I certainly know that many Facebook groups have been shut down. People take all the time to build the list um, on Facebook and build this great rocking team. And, you know, people are very active and they're engaging on that. And then suddenly it's all gone. I would hate that to happen to you. And that's why I want to teach you about email marketing. Okay, building a relationship with your prospects is the first step, but there's something else. That builds trust. Remember that people will not buy from you unless they know, like, and trust you. So you want to make sure that you are building trust with your audience. And of course, the only way to do that is to offer solutions to their problems. So that is what each post that you write on your website does. That is what each a book that you create, ebook you create, or um, any kind of content upgrade, any checklist or cheat sheets or whatever it is, any video that you create, it's all about offering solutions to your audience. They have certain questions, you can answer those questions, and that's what you're doing. Of course, in your email marketing, you're going to do that as well. And ultimately, that is how you're going to generate sales. So your email list and your sales funnel go hand in hand in helping you generate actual sales. The purpose of 
all content marketing, let's just go back and talk about that, is to educate, engage, inform, inspire, or entertain. Educate, engage, inform, inspire, or entertain. Just bear that in mind with any kind of marketing that you're doing, any kind of content marketing, email marketing, um, Facebook marketing, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever you're doing. So, yeah, so whether it's social media marketing or marketing on your website, whether you're marketing through a sales funnel, all of these things need to be taken into consideration. You're always going to be doing one of those five things. So let's get into the nitty gritties now. How do you write emails that sell? Let's talk about this. First of all, you want to have a very enticing subject line. You want to really bring people in the minute that you start writing that email. So that subject line that a person sees when the email pops in has to be enticing and make them want to read more answer this question would i open this email if i saw this subject line would i open this email very important as you're working just remember to ask yourself these questions as you're busy developing your subject lines then you want to have a gripping opening sentence this one was a real shocker you can tell you want to have an opening sentence that ties into that initial subject line and one that really leads the person into reading the rest of the post so here you would ask yourself would i want to read on if i saw my first line or my first opening lines in this email would i want to keep reading the email and then you want to lead with an engaging story. So you can see this little girl is telling her little campfire story to her friend or maybe baby sister. And um, her story is a horror story. Those can work really well on the net, especially if you are presenting a problem and then later on presenting the solution or maybe even presenting a problem that you once grappled with and the solution that you discovered. So tell an engaging story that gets people interested. The question you could ask yourself is, would I read this email? Would I carry on reading the story? Is the story um, interesting enough for me to keep going? The next thing you want to make sure you have in an email of this nature is the lesson that you learned, what lesson you learned and the takeaways. You know, people love to say what kind of takeaways they got from any particular thing. You want to be able to state those loud and clear so that people can see what actually transpired. Like you can take them through the story and get to a point where actually there was a great solution at the end. So here, remember to bear in this in mind, that people always want to know what's in it for me. And this is a great place for you to really, really espouse the benefits of whatever it is that you're offering in this particular email. What's in it for your reader? What's in it for your audience? Really think about that and give as many, many benefits as you can. Remember, they are coming. Most people want to come to you not just for solutions, but for an entire transformation. And if you can show them what the transformation is, how their lives will change when they have this thing that you're offering, then you will really have someone who's ready to take the next step. So what comes next? You want to have a strong call to action. So you have this amazing offer that is going to turn this person's lives around, absolutely transform them and give them, you know, a, a major change. You want to have a strong call to action now that makes them click. So what your, your call to action is always that thing that says, this is the next step we want you to take. And it's generally click here to go on to the sales page or to go on to watch another video or find something, you know, whatever it is that's going to take them to the next step that will actually get them to buy the product. Yeah, maybe it's even a sales call. You want to book a sales call with that person or, or book a one-on-one a -on -one session, a discovery call. Um, but what you've got to make sure about is that your email um, call to action is getting the person to the next step that you want to take them to. Okay. 
Now, here's six types of emails that sell well. These are the hot selling emails that you can use. I've mentioned the one, the first one is telling a story. So that is definitely an email technique that you can use in your email marketing. And then there's also um, writing emails that have a checklist or tips in them. You can give your five top tips from whatever your offer is. Say now you have created an amazing course um, that has, I don't know, 21 um, days and on each day they learn something else about email marketing, for example, you could give a checklist um, or tips, five tips, uh, for your five favorite tips from that particular course and just introduce them. Don't give it all away, but just introduce the tips and then they will hopefully come to the course to get more from you. Remember that in your emails, always to offer value. Every time that you are doing anything with your audience, you want to offer as much value as you can to take your customers up the value ladder from prospect to lead, from lead to customer, from customer to customer for life. And um, if you don't know anything about the value ladder, I'll pop a link below and you can have a look at what the value ladder is in one of my um, previous posts. Um, the next good email that you could send is um, offering questions and answers. So in your, in your email subject line, you would throw out a question that you know your audience is asking, or you could even have a number of questions that you know your, your, your audience is asking. Maybe they have even come to you and asked these questions, and then you can offer some answers. Um, the fourth one is a popular reference. So what I mean by this is, can you see these two people watching a video? Um, think about something that is very topical at the moment or any, any kind of popular reference. So something, for example, you could, you could write an email um, about, I don't know if any of you watched Jerry Maguire. It was a great movie back in the, well, I'm going to give my age away again here, but the 90s or something. Um, anyway, so Jerry Maguire had this big statement that he said, help me help you. And you could start your email with a popular reference like that. Most people have heard of Jerry Maguire and they know that help me help you saying comes from that movie. Um, or something that's topical right now is a book called The One Thing. I'm reading about it everywhere. I've, said, I've seen so many posts about it. I can't believe I haven't actually bought this book yet because so many people are talking about the one thing. But I think because so many people are talking about it, I've actually got the idea that you have to focus on the one thing and I probably don't need to read the book. But anyway, that is a popular reference you could use. You could use as your email title, the one thing. And then, of course, you could talk about the one thing you need to know about email marketing or something like that, whatever it is, the subject that you're talking about. Then um, number five is using controversy. Some people do this really well. I haven't really managed to ever use controversy in my emails, but um, it's certainly one you can play with. Um, and so that is just taking something, a controversial subject that, and laying that in the subject line and you know, sort of read, um, it's a little bit clickbaity for me, which is probably why I don't really use it. But um, you could, for example, shock them with something like uh, this picture I chose was, you know, people going partying, you could say something like, I partied up a storm last night. And, you know, then your email can talk about the kind of party that it really was. And, you know, it obviously wasn't going out there and getting drunk and disorderly. But <laughs> um, yeah, unless, of course, that's your thing. And that's what you want to email people about. But I mean, that's generally not what we're doing as digital entrepreneurs. I digress. Create curiosity. That's obviously a very important thing to do with every single email you send. You want to create curiosity so that the person reading your emails will keep reading and um, continue to read your emails. Um, I just want to quickly pop over to an email that I read a couple of days ago. So um, this is what it was. It was by Lisbeth House of Brazen. And she did this extremely well. Her, her headline drew me in. This was her subject line. If you're desperate and needy, you'll repel money. Now, I had seen this statement somewhere else um, a couple of days before. So I kind of thought, oh, okay, I must open this email. And I went in and she said, 
hey Lauren, if you're desperate and needy, you'll repel, you'll repel money. And then she said, I heard a coach say this on a live stream the other day and was like, are you serious? Way to make people who are healing their money stories feel, feel even more like SH1T. <laughs> okay, she swears quite a lot in this email. Um, and I really don't like to do that on my videos. But anyway, um, her email caught my attention. It was really, really good. And what did I do? I got to her PS at the end. She she ranted in this email about you know what the coach said and how she feels it's absolutely not the right way to go. And then at the end, she said, click here to join the 21 day money mindset reset and she was offering a 50% off. So she used this very awesome tactic to um, give us a 50% off and guess what? I went for it, I bought the course, I have started my 21 day money mindset reset. And yeah, I'm really excited about it. So, you know, that was just one of the emails that I've seen. Let's just get back into our, yeah. Here we go. Um, let's get back here. So just to give you an example of a great email, you know, there are, I subscribe to so many, many lists and there's no way that I could read everybody's emails. Um, I just don't get to them. Nobody has that amount of time every day. Um, but when an email subject line is really good and you are the right target market, you will open it. And that is what you want to get to with your emails. You need to know your, your target market really well, know what their needs are, know what their pain points are and then know how to address them and once you do that and you do that well your emails are going to flow really well and your email marketing is going to be successful so the last question I think that you need to ask yourself in your whole email marketing strategy is would I stay on this email list would I stay on my own email list if I was sending out these particular emails that I'm sending this campaign that I'm sending would I stay on my email list? If you can answer that question with a resounding yes, <laughs> then you have a great email marketing campaign. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for listening to me. And please, please, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you like, pop me a comment below. And if you really, really feel very generous today, could you also share on your social media profiles? That would be awesome. Thanks so much. Ciao for now.